do you ever find find yourself like yeah i'll the i'll buy this because i'll know i'll use it like a million times for a video <laughs> yeah no for real i'm like i definitely find myself in cosplay more often now because of tiktok because i'm like oh this sound would be great for leia oh, i guess i gotta jump in my leia cosplay and make it it just adds like that much more to it so now i'm like yeah I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of these yeah. outfits. <laughs> and there's definitely things where I'm like, I've gotten and I'm like, I probably won't wear this out in public for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> From a galaxy not too far from here, this is Going Rogue. I'm Andrew DiMolanta. We are on our continuous road to Star Wars Celebration. Last week, we had on Laura Kelly, an old Schmodown friend. We've gone back and forth in our, our trivia pursuits. But to th today, I am joined by another TikTok friend of mine. I believe that she's probably one of the first TikTok friends that followed me back on, on TikTok. I'm not sure. Um, but great, great content on TikTok. It is Maria. Uh, I know her as Alderaan Places. Maria, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Before we get into all the discussion, I have to know the story behind your, your username because I, I always like, I was like, Alderaan Places. That sounds like something I should know. And am I missing something? What's going on? <laughs> Meaning to make a TikTok about the origins of my name. But it's really simple. It's the punchline of a really corny Star Wars joke mm -hmm. that somebody once told me. Uh, why couldn't Luke find Leia? Because he was looking in all Duran oh, places. That makes so, so much sense. And I thought, that's so cute. That's so funny. And then and I wanted to make a new, I was, at the time, I was wanting to make a new name for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, all Duran places. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm assuming the underscore is because somebody else had it already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's... Meanwhile, I was thinking, I was like, this is so original. No one's going to have this. And I was like, all right, fine. We'll put an underscore at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Rogue Leader. It's far more creative than Rogue Leader because it's my gamer tag. I've had it for years and it's like not very original. But I was like, oh, of course, somebody has Rogue Leader on TikTok. So I was like, yeah, put the droop on it. Um, yeah, you so... do what you got to do, right? Especially yeah. when you're attached to a name. You're like, well, I, I really like it, so... Yeah. So the point of these of these episodes is to get to know uh, some of my new newer uh, Star Wars friends that are out there. It's reconnecting with all the friends that I've met through other means, whether it be the showdown or uh, or just talking at conventions. And you're one of the few that actually responded back. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's great. Let's have her on. So, but first, I just want to know where does your Star Wars journey start? Like, where, who, like, how did you get into the franchise? Who introduced it to you? How long have you been a fan? Just stuff like that. You know, I didn't start off as like a really hardcore fan. I watched them, the originals, very passively, like as a kid, and didn't really discover them again until high school. And that's when I feel like I really like sat down, watched them, and uh, really took in the story and enjoyed it for what it was. You know, when you're a kid, you're just like, yeah, whatever. You know, you watch very passively. Or at least me, I would sometimes watch things very passively. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in high school rediscovering it, that was when I really was like, wow, oh, I really, really like this. I really like these these stories. I love the characters. Um, and then um, I, I went to the Star Wars uh, weekends that they had at Disney World. And it was like the hyper hoopla and it was just the excitement and all the fans and everyone just, just the hype, the hype. I was like, I love this. This is amazing. I want to be a part of this always. Um, and that's what really, what really lit the spark, I think, was just seeing how passionate all the fans were about it and being like, yeah, I want to be a part of this for do you, sure. Do you remember what movie it was that got you back into the fandom? Like you said, in high school? Yeah. Oh, oh, it was um, it was a new hope. I I started right back um mm -hmm. at the very beginning. <laughs> and I was like, I I want to watch these from start to finish. It was very like intentional too. I was like, I want to. I think it was like playing on TV one day or playing somewhere in like public, and I was like, I want to sit down and really because you know it's Star Wars. It's such like a big pop mm -hmm. culture thing. And I felt like I really want. I was like, I really want to sit down and watch it. And so and so I did, and I watched the entire trilogy, the original trilogy, and loved it. And then afterwards, going to the hoopla and everything, I was like, 
man, I gotta watch the prequels. Because actually, now going back and thinking about it, my mother did take me to see Phantom Menace when I was a child. I was about six when it came out, so I was very young. So I, I, I remember the pod racing. Yeah. I remember the pod racing and young Anakin. And that, it, oh, and then, of course, Queen Amidala. I used to have a Barbie doll of her. But in the way that children enjoy it, like, yeah, yeah, she's got mm-hmm. cool makeup on, or like, yeah, he's a kid like me. So, like I said, I was enjoying it, but not really... Um, not really understanding the story or the the themes and such. Um, so really that came along later when I was mm-hmm. older and I could really enjoy it in its fullness. <laughs> yeah, you're saying like, oh, I was six years old when Phantom Menace came out. I'm like, oh God, I was a teenager. <laughs> when it came out, I, was like, I'm so... I wish, I feel like if I had been a teenager, you know, yeah. I would have appreciated that. But when as a kid, you know, in your six. But I don't think my attention span was that great. Because <laughs> that's that's when I got into to the, the franchise. Like, I've told the story a million times. My my oldest mm-hmm. memory is Star Wars. And uh, it's like, I think it was A New Hope that, that that my parents showed me on a snow day. And when I li- we lived up in Washington State. And it's like, I was like I said, I was six. And I, I, I had this problem still uh, at my age. I have a really short attention span. But when I do get attached to something, like, you can't drag me away from it. I'm pretty sure I have ADHD. I just it was never diagnosed with it. Yeah, I, it. yeah, exactly. I hyper fixate, fixate on it. And Star Wars was always that one thing that kept me occupied. So when I wasn't at school, my, mom, my parents was like, just put the movie on. <laughs> and I was put Star Wars on for <laughs> with, the, with the Star Wars on for, for our middle child. The, the other two, the, we'll figure out with them. But I was always in front of the TV wearing the tapes out, like just hyper fixated on it, like you said. Well, like you said, you were mentioning uh, Star Wars weekends. I've been in Orlando since 2000, 2007. I never went to a Star Wars weekend and <laughs> it, was, it was killing me. I wanted to do. And then uh, Galaxy's Edge got announced. I'm like, oh, I'm totally going to that. Yeah. And I was like, let me wait a bit. I don't want to go on a huge, the huge opening day crowds. And then COVID hits. And I was like, oh, crap. Then I have, you know, then I have a child and I can't go for some time. And I, then this year I finally was able to go. So it was just one of those things where they're like, you still haven't gone. You still haven't gone. I was like, no, I haven't gone. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. But uh, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's a luxury to be able to do that, mm-hmm. you know, and not everyone is able to right away. Or even like, you know, when you haven't had time to go to the movies, what, you haven't seen that yet? It's like, ah, people have got lives, you know, <laughs> it can it can be hard to make time. But, yeah. But when you finally do go, oh my gosh, you're like, like seeing the Falcon for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, where, so you said that you live out, you live out on the West Coast. Have you, so you have Disneyland near you. Did yeah. you go to Galaxy's Edge? Obviously, did you go to El- to the one in Anaheim or the one in Orlando? Because yeah, I've never been to the one in Orlando, but I hear they're pretty much an exact copy of each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I hear, anyways. Uh, so it's amazing. Like oh, yeah. it, you're just fully immersed. It's just the attention to detail, um, the little things that mm-hmm. they thought of, like all the footprints of the creatures. Yeah. You can, yeah, amazing. All you can overhear conversations from windows, uh, and get a little piece of a story. There's like, um, in one of the windows, I can't remember where it is, but in one of the windows, you can hear uh, a young woman telling her family that she's going to join. She's going to join the first order. I think she said she's going to join the first order of the resistance. I can't remember which it is, but it's like, I'm like, wow, these heartfelt conversations happening, like. It's just like a little side thing. It's nev- nothing you would that jumps out at you. It's just like if you just happen to overhear it, you're there at the right time. And I just feel like those attention, those small details really just bring you in more. You're like, what? They thought of that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what, what was your most fun? When you first went to Galaxy Edge for the, fir- Galaxy Edge for the first time, like, what was the thing that like, you remember? Like, you always remember that because I have mine. But like, so I was like, you, you, you finished your day and you're like, oh my God, I will never forget this um, from that day. I feel like there's so much that, <laughs> that stands out. I, building the light, building my lightsaber was pretty, a pr- pretty amazing. It, it definitely took a big chunk out of my time there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause we were at the time they were still doing like a line. So it did take a, take a while. It was a little, a little, uh, a little messy, uh, but man, like igniting that lightsaber and raising it up and the music swelling oh. and you're just looking at everyone around you oh can't top that that yeah. was 
so cool. That's, so dang cool. It sounds, now I'm yeah. curious what, your, what yours was. I was not able to build a lightsaber. That was the thing that I was like, one of those things I was like, I got to do this. I have to build a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to, to, to get to that part. Um, but there's so much stuff that like I wasn't able to do. Like I wanted to interact with more of the characters, but obviously since the COVID restrictions, they have to stand behind. And we just we didn't have time to stand and wait for the characters to come out. That was something I really wasn't able to do. The one thing that I, I was just like, I got so lost in uh, Smuggler's Run. Uh, all my friends that took us there, they 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 are their annual pass holders, so they go like almost every week, and I'm like so freaking jealous of them. But uh, they all took us like, you guys got to pilot it. Me, it was me, me, and my wife, and then our two friends were back. We had one rando uh, behind us, but uh, I got to I got to sit in the the right side pilot seat, which sends the the Falcon to hyperspace. And yeah. this was six year old Andrew, just like. Oh, uh, and I was like freaking what? out. Like, I'm surprised my friends didn't take a, a video of me because I literally took my hands off the controls. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so it, it was just such like that out of the whole day. Like we we rode resistance and we did all this stuff and all the details. I was like, oh my god, that's this droid because I'm a trip. I'm a trivia head. Um, you probably heard me say the down. So my, I don't know if not, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie trivia Schmodown, but that's the corner of the internet that I'm popular with. But um. Okay. I'll, I'll explain off air, <laughs> but um, yeah, like all those small details. I was like, God, that's so awesome because that's that's from that droid and that's from that animal. But like the second I sat down, the second I stepped into the Falcon, I was like, like nerd tears, just like, oh my god, oh it's the Dajar, oh my god, and like they took a picture of me and my wife at the at the Dajar table. I'm pretty sure you can see tears in my eyes because it was I was just so like, like enthralled like oh my god this is my childhood coming to life and i'm standing in the, like it was just so overwhelming yeah. it, it's it's so yeah it's so true because for so long we've only been experiencing it on the screen mm-hmm. but now finally you're in those sets you're in those moments of star wars like you're living it now mm-hmm. and it's just it hits you and there's a lot of emotion yeah um, yeah, so we're here to talk about Star Wars Celebration, obviously. Why, why else? Because we're all, we're all we're all we're all Star Wars fans. So, is this your first Star Wars Celebration, or have you been to other ones at all? Yeah, this is my first Star Wars Celebration, and I am very mm-hmm. excited. <laughs> I cannot wait, and it's been a long time coming because you know, with COVID, and um, you know, it got pushed back. It was disappointing, but you know, it was like. That's all right. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to come back. It's going to be safe and we're going to have a good time. And when it's time, we're going to celebrate. It's going to be Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's going to be wonderful. So I am super excited. It's been the anticipation mm-hmm. has been building. <laughs> yeah, I've been fortunate enough to go to the one when I was out here in Orlando and then Chicago uh, was right. my second one. So I was able to go to two. I think it made up for all the times I didn't go to, you know, to, to Galaxy's Edge and, and do Star Wars weekends. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a lot from what I, from what I hear from all the people that went to Star Wars uh, Star Wars weekends. It's a lot like that where it's all like just Star Wars fans, and it's like I've talked to everybody that has gone. It's like that immediate like connection because like the only other con I've been to is MegaCon out here in Orlando. I did it once. I went to MegaCon for so many years because I still have friends who who live out in in Orlando. So that would be our yearly con that we would go to all together. So actually, it's funny that you mention. Star Wars Celebration in Orlando because we were actually thinking we're like should we go to Star Wars Celebration or can we do or should we do MegaCon like which one we can only do one and we've decided on MegaCon mm-hmm. um which, you know sad for Star Wars Celebration <laughs> but MegaCon was wonderful um and now now I get to enjoy Star Wars <laughs> yeah, so we might have almost run into each other because I was I we, we yeah. might have Cro- crossed yeah. paths yeah, because I was in my res- I, like I call it my Mark One Resistance pilot outfit because it was very it was like very new. I, all the pieces weren't nowhere near at screen accurate. The helmet was very janky. So like I I, rem- I think the it was I can't remember what what year it was. It was either fifteen or sixteen. Um, I remember they had the huge like a uh, the Luga Beast. Um, uh-huh. in the middle of the of the thing that was I, that year. I think that was sixteen because I think I was there as well. And me and my friend, I was dressed up as Leia. I had a friend who dressed up as Ray, and we had a Padme in our group, and it was so cool. It was yeah. so dang cool. And they had the tra- the trash compactor. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we might have crossed paths. <laughs> we probably, we probably <laughs> ran into each other. I bet. Just like <laughs> small world. I mean, yeah. But like from everything that I hear, because like you know, all you're probably no stranger to to cons, obviously. 
But like, mm-hmm. you know, because like Megan was like, oh man, that's cool. Because I'm, you know, aside from Star Wars, I, I like DC. I like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a nerd at heart. I like DC. I like Marvel, and like I run into a bunch of cosplayers. Like, oh, that's a cool cosplay. That's so cool. But it's celebration. It's everywhere you look. It's it's Star Wars. Like everywhere you you connect, it's that immediate connection with people that I. That's an atmosphere that you can't replicate other than celebration, and it's. It's wild. That's what connects us all is Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like like you said, if you're you know at a Megacon convention, you'll meet people from all different fandoms, but specifically at Star Wars Celebration, these are the mega fans. Mm-hmm. These are the diehards who, yeah. are, who are ready. And it's, yeah, it's that instant connection with them. Like, instantly, we know we have something yeah. in common. We all have Star Wars in common. <laughs> mm-hmm. What would you say you're most excited for um, uh, coming up in, in May? Oh man, I am I'm really excited for um for the panels. I can't wait to see what panels we have. I'm like, drop that schedule. Yeah. <laughs> I I am a planner and I'm ready to plan my day and see what I want to do. I'm going with a friend of mine. So, you know, I we want to prioritize everything. So I'm very excited to um to see what they're gonna be offering. I'm also very excited to cosplay. I will say I I did put off so I procrastinated a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, when you think you have two years, you're like, I got okay, plenty so of time. Yeah. So I definitely, in in true cosplayer fashion, I will be, you know, crunching probably the day before con mm-hmm. um, to finish some things. But I'm sure if I get it all together, I will be very excited. and It'll be a lot of yeah. fun. So while we're on the subject of cosplay, I mean, one, one look at your TikTok page and it's like, cosplay and like it's in your it's in your bio it's in and everything and so just rewind a little bit get, come out of the star wars realm for a second like what got you into cosplay and like how long have you been doing it i enjoyed um dressing up and costumes uh i was a big theater kid i went to college for theater so like playing a part and dressing up was nothing new to me it's something i always enjoyed and it and it was Cosplay specifically was something I started getting interested in when I was doing research for a Halloween costume. I really wanted to be Alice, at Alice from Alice in Wonderland, but I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to be like Halloween store, party city, like Alice. I wanted to like look legit. I was like, no, I got to find a legit costume. So at, during my research, I found like Alice in Wonderland cosplay and it was finally like this word cosplay attached to Alice in Wonderland I was finding like really authentic and screen accurate costumes and I was like what is this cosplay Hmm. (laughs) um so that was kind of like very appropriately I went down the rabbit hole from there (laughs) and so I was very curious about it didn't quite do I think I was dipping my toes in with the Halloween costume and then when I when I went to Florida for an internship, I ended up making a friend who was really into cosplay, and he was like, "Oh, do you do you want to do this? You want to put like a group together?" And I was like, "Yes, yes." <laughs> so me and all my roommates did like a group cosplay, and uh, my wonderful friend Jessica um, is a great, amazing seamstress, and she made all our costumes for us. She was doing the heavy lifting. And that, really, it, it's her. I don't. I'm not sure if it if it wasn't for her, I'm not sure I would have actually got the courage to do it. So I think it's like finding that one person that gives you permission. Like, <laughs> hey, you can do this. It's not weird. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, and just creating that safe space. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I love this. Mm-hmm. And then going to like my first con and taking photos, and everyone was so nice and like. I was loving everyone's cosplays and being like, can I get a photo with you? Oh my gosh. Like, it's just, it was such a supportive, um, just very kind environment. And I was like, I need more. <laughs> <laughs> how much more like cosplay did you do? Like how many out, like, is your like closet just full of outfits or like, do you try to like yeah. hold, hold it back? <laughs> yeah, I, I do have quite a few outfits. Uh, and some of them are, some of them are at home with my parents back <laughs> uh back at home i my poor parents i just use them as a storage unit now that i've moved out that's that's my like, my parents with star wars come. toys <laughs> right yeah and i was like we're gonna come and clean this out and i'm just yeah. like you hold on to it and it's really hard to to part ways with the cosplay because mm-hmm. you're like am i gonna wear this again i might wear it again and you or you just remember the good times that you had in it mm-hmm. and even if you don't think you're going to cosplay it again, there's part of you that 
doesn't want to let it go. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's also hard. So it's hard to find like the storage space. It's like that practical and my mm. porter mentality at, <laughs> at odds with one another. Yeah, so, um, do what, what do you do for like, get, cause what I've been doing very recently of what I've been doing is trying to like piece together from different places that I, I finally got a, a lot of, like, I finally got everything I need for, for what I have planned. I just have to tinker with everything because I don't know if you had this, this problem, like, cause I'm going as, uh, I have a Han Solo outfit and I have my, mm-hmm. my Jedi tunic. You've probably seen it on my, my page. Um, yeah. So I have that. Actually, I'm waiting. Actually, no, I lied. I have one more piece. I have a new robe um, that's coming in in the next two weeks because I'm upgrading my robe. My wife's going to kill me. Um, <laughs> spending all this money because uh, every time something comes in, she's like, another another piece? Yeah. I'm like, You're like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't look at the credit card bill this month. Uh, <laughs> but what I've been doing is like I go to like Amazon and if I whatever I can't fit or figure out with other, I'll go, I'll go to Etsy to because I can't sew. So it's like I, I I commissioned somebody to sew for me. <laughs> you are in good company. I I can sew a bit. I am not. It's not my strong suit. I have been spoiled by years of having a seamstress friend, <laughs> and I built odds and ends, and I built little things and sewed some things here and there. But it's still something I'm working towards and trying to get mm. better at. So it's a journey. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, I, I have this problem. Like I my my uh, Han Solo. Uh, the holster or belt and holster the holster sits like an inch too low so now i got to figure out how to bring it up because it keeps hitting the boot i'm like this i can't mm-hmm. i can't go all day with it hitting the boot so i got to figure out a way to to like bring just the holster up and i was like god and it's it, it's either like when i order something it's like either a size too big or if i get the size lower it's too tight like um do you ever yeah. find that you ever find that like frustrating cool time because that is what i do i'll try to order things maybe like that can work or maybe things that I can um do alterations on because like I like like you I'm not so confident when it comes to sewing so I try to get something as close as possible and then like I bet I can alter that a bit um yeah and then sometimes things just don't fit because mass production and body sizes (laughs) it's not it's not sizing is not always accurate and Mm -hmm. so it's it's hard um so i totally i feel the struggle (laughs) yeah yeah, that's that's the biggest part because it's like i'll measure myself three times and it's like yeah that's the that's the size they said it fits but it's too small so send it back i don't think this is accurate (laughs) (laughs) so what, what would you say is like like you said you're trying to get better at you know sewing and all that stuff because i've over the years a lot of the stuff that i've followed are they're mostly like prop building and things like that. What, what are your, like your go-to like resources? Like, I don't know how to do that. Let me go here. Do you have anything like that? Specifically, I am in Facebook groups for specific characters. So I am in an Ahsoka Facebook group, like for cosplayers. I'm in um, a Princess Leia cosplayer group. And those cosplayers and those groups, angels. <laughs> they are your fellow cosplayers, I feel like are your you know, your best resources. And they're, they're always so helpful. Um, like you can just pose a question like, Hey, I'm looking for this sort of fabric. Um, has anyone bought in something similar? And people will drop links and be like, Hey, this is the fabric I got. Or you can be like, Hey, I'm really stumped on how to go about making this belt. And people will drop like full tutorials that they made be like, Hey, this is how mine came out. Here's a tutorial. Yeah. And I'm just like, Thank you. And it's just every, it's just in the group and they have like, um, they have files that are put away too. If you need, um, templates, uh, like for like a lot of, uh, a lot of the cosplayers in there have templates like to make Ahsoka's headpiece, which is really helpful. Um, what else? Or, um, patterns for, for certain costumes. Um, and, and they're like, here, it's for free. Just take huh. it. I'm like, for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, just just fellow cosplayers, mm-hmm. just pop on. If, I, if you're looking to cosplay a character, I guarantee there's probably a group dedicated, and they're very eager to help and assist. Mm-hmm. So. That, yeah, that sounds way more efficient than what I've been doing because I've actually one of the biggest resources I follow is uh, a YouTube channel called Punished Props. They do a lot of, like oh. they use like a lot of EVA foam, 3D printing, and a lot of like just they do a lot of like blasters and like they're more mostly props. And that's like nice. like right up my alley. Yeah. A lot of the stuff is like just props. And it's like, that really isn't what I'm looking for. I need somebody to help me with like, you know, readjusting this and sewing this. And it's like, I don't know where to look. 
but that sounds way more efficient than what I've been doing. So, cause I'm, I, yeah. I'm very like, very, very, I'm like almost like totally new to cosplay. Like, um, do you find TikTok to be like, sort of like a, like, a reason to dress up more <laughs> because like i don't think i would nearly as got i wouldn't have gotten my jedi tunic i wouldn't have been more as confident as i would to to cosplay as han solo um do you ever find find yourself like yeah i'll the i'll buy this because i'll know i'll use it like a million times for a video <laughs> yeah no for real i'm like i definitely find myself in cosplay more often now because of tiktok because i'm like Oh, this sound would be great for Leia. Oh, I guess I got to jump in my Leia cosplay and make it. It just adds like that much more to it. Um, same with like my Jedi tunic that I have. Um, originally did that for a Halloween party with a friend. She went as the master. I was the Padawan. So I have like my little braid. Um, <laughs> and we just did it for a Halloween party. And now it's probably what I wear the most on mm -hmm. my TikToks because I love to make Obi-Wan um, and Anakin <laughs> TikToks the most probably. Yeah. So that's the one I wear the, wear the most now. And so now I'm like, yeah, I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of these <laughs> outfits. <laughs> and there's definitely things where I'm like, I've gotten and I'm like, I probably won't wear this out in public for TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> like I had recently bought like this Spider-Man Captain America suit. It was yeah, literally a children's suit <laughs> from Amazon. Um it's hilarious. And I'm like, yeah, and it doesn't fit perfectly, but like for the sake of TikTok, I'm like, it's not bad for TikTok. It's like a twenty dollar <laughs> suit. I mean yeah. <laughs> well, I've been meaning to ask, like, oh, like, wow, oh, she's on. I'm gonna ask this because, like, some of the audio you use, I'm like, where does she find this? Because you, if you track back, because like the, I think the first time we interacted is when I do edit you a couple of times, and like, yeah. uh, do you, you, your, like, your pages kind of influence the stuff that I've done because before I started duetting you, like, I would look back and like, I, I would do the lip syncing stuff, and I was like, I wasn't doing it, quote unquote, properly. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, but then I started I stumbled across your page. I do it, you know, and I'm like, huh, the stuff she's doing is doing really well. Maybe I'll do it. I'll, I'll kind of mimic what she's doing on her page, and I'll, then you can literally track the difference on my page. You go way back, and you start going <laughs> forward to the videos, and it's like, oh, and just getting better at this. And then the last couple I've gotten, yeah. Can I just say the quality? And I've been meaning to talk to you about this. The quality of your TikToks. <laughs> Chef's kiss immaculate. I was like, I need to find out what he's using because I'm just using the front camera <laughs> of my iPhone. I'm just like, I, I feel like the quality drops so low when I upload it. I was like, oh, this didn't look that bad when I finished <laughs> it. But, but I see yours. It's like crystal clear. The editing. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta level up. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the first to admit, I put way too much effort into my silly little TikTok videos because I shoot in 4K. I have, I'm like I said, I'm a videographer, so I have three different cameras. I have all right. this professional lighting, and I have all the. Proper, I do everything outside of the app. I like, mm -hmm. I'll shoot in. So like, I will be I the first. Go. Yeah, <laughs> I will be the first to admit, like, for for a 30 second video, Andrew, you're putting in at least four hours of work. What are you doing? So good, though. <laughs> you. They look so good. It's worth it. No, I'm literally like, is this dude on a studio set? Do you have <laughs> freaking Lucasfilm stuff? Yeah. Warner Brothers? What's going on here? Hey, I like, like, like you said, like repurposing the things you have. Like, it's so, it's like, it gives me an excuse to use all the stuff I already have more often. Yeah. So, but it's, it's, yeah. So, like, but like, yeah, like, but like I said, your stuff it definitely influenced the stuff that I, I, I've been doing because the last couple that I've done, like, just like blew up. But do you ever find because like it's frustrating? Like, I have a conversation with like all the other people that are on the platform that like mm -hmm. uh, all the silly joke stuff that I've done, all this, all the like stuff that I have for like my outfits and the green screen and everything goes up. They do really well. But then I try to give my opinion on Star Wars and it gets like maybe 50 likes. And it's like, ah, yeah. yeah, it's 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 so funny. Um, it sometimes like the the stuff that you're really and most excited to make ends up falling flat on its face mm -hmm. at least in my experience and i'm like what i thought that was so good i thought you all were gonna like that and then in two seconds i make like a stupid video like man it, it it blows up and i'm just like <laughs> i don't know what the method is i don't know i don't it's, know what the algorithm wants <laughs> it's so weird because when i first joined uh my to this day my most popular video it has over like god how many likes is that it has like over like 60,000 likes on it. And it was this, like, when that whole, like, if I break into your house with this trend, that whole trend is this guy. 
is, yeah, if he, he breaks, like, if I broke in your house with a gaffy stick, what are you going to do? And on a whim, I'm like, all right, I only walk down my hallway, my Jedi, my, my, my Jedi hood up and going, woo, like Obi-Wan from this, from uh, Onu Hope. And it just blew up. I'm like, why? It is the dumbest thing I ever did, but it, it's the most popular thing on my page. So it's, like, it's TikTok is just so weird like that. But yeah, you never know what they're going to like. Yeah. And and I've been wanting to do like more like talk downs about Star Wars or like you said, like giving my opinion. And I'm always like, do I want to do that? Because I always feel like it it sometimes brings in like the worst part of the fandom. It kind yeah. of invites like, Ooh. so I'm like, Meh. but you know. It's like you're going to always have those mm -hmm. people. You're always going to have the trolls or like yeah. the toxic people. Have you ever uh, experienced something like Because like I know growing up, I, I've never been, thankfully, I've never been picked on or bullied for being a Star Wars fan. Like I said, I was the only yeah. fan in my, my in my class ever growing up. I got bullied for other things, but not <laughs> not that. But like, have you ever experienced that of like, especially being a female fan? Like, have you ever, yeah. have you ever had like, a, like, like the disgruntled fanboys? Like, oh, what does this chick know about Star Wars? Like, have you ever experienced that? Yeah, um, not specific. I mean, I've had some people like on TikTok, not like pretty here, girl, but like mm -hmm. just kind of like challenge something that I've said. And I'm just like, I don't know why I need to, mm -hmm. why I need to, e even when it's just like a silly joke, I'm just like, I don't know why. I remember I made like a Leia video and someone was like, Padme's hotter. And I'm just like, what does that have to do? This is just a <laughs> silly joke about just Leia. And it had nothing to do with like her. Her looks, it was just like a character trait. Like, I can't even remember. It's probably her being sassy because that's mm -hmm. what all my Leia TikToks are. But I am also a gamer. And so I have had, had the experience of just having like toxic people online. Like, I usually don't online game at all. Oh. Because uh, I've always been like a store, I've always been like a very story oriented gamer. I usually like playing just like one person's and like progressing a story uh, and then getting that satisfying ending and seeing how it unfolds. Um, and so I don't normally play online, but it is really toxic when you do yeah. play online. I, uh, I feel like you either meet like the worst people or you meet the best people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, yeah I game with my friends online like every weekend almost. And um, what was the last? What would you say was your last like multiplayer game that you played? Uh, Overwatch. Like I, I still go in. Yeah, I, I love Overwatch. <laughs> every weekend. That was play. that's the um, game we play. I, I never jump in the chat, but I'm I'm always on. <laughs> my my teammates probably hate me because I'm not coordinating with anyone. I'm just kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> God, I love Overwatch so much. It's it's like we jumped on in the open beta and we played ever since. Some of my friends were are like, oh, it's a dead game, but like I I love it so much. Who's your main? I love it too. Uh, Tracer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm a uh, I'm, I'm a tank support, so I'm, I'm Reinhardt Anna. So nice, nice. Yeah, Tracer <laughs> was like my go-to. I I played her because I was like, I like her. She's cute and spunky. I want to play as her. And then I'm like, actually, I really like zipping around mm -hmm. and like rewinding time. But also, I love Junkrat because who doesn't love being chaotic? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I yeah, I was yeah I was a Junkrat main for a while, and then my my friends got, became better at. DPS, so um, <laughs> yeah, fell into my, my proper around. role. I got around He's to like it. Competitive on there too. We we used to, but it's just such a like. I feel like you find more, like you said, the more of the toxic players on competitive than you do yeah. in uh in casual. So we only play casual now, and you know, so um, and the games go so much quicker. I don't have time to play competitive anymore. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I I never had an interest in it, but my brother in law and his friend were like, "Why don't you play with us? Let's get competitive." So I I played a few times with them. Um, and then I would be on the chat. Luckily, I felt like I'm like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm with other people. So if people are being jerks. I have other people to like back me up. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like fun, but also I feel like stressful. And I'm just like, yeah, ah, I feel like I play games to like de-stress. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. definitely get heated sometimes because when we played competitive, I was like get so mad at our random players. So it's like, ah, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it can also bring out a bad side of, yourself yeah. as well and you're like oh, i don't like that side of yeah. me i did have a really great experience though um i love mass effect trilogy mm -hmm. the mass effect trilogy, trilogy is amazing um so for a hot minute i did play online and this was like way after like the series had already been out for like mm -hmm. had been out for a few years um and i ended up hopping uh my friend hopped off and i was playing with these like two random like teenage boys and like uh, they can't hear me because I'm not connected, but I could hear them. 
and you think like teenage boys like oh my god is this gonna be like the worst mm-hmm. but they were like so they were like so funny they were just like joking i could tell if they were friends at like school because they were talking about like their teacher and homework <laughs> and uh my gamer tag is dizzy dancer and they were like yo dizzy are, are you a girl are you a girl dizzy? <laughs> And so I changed my armor to pink because I couldn't jump in the chat. And then oh. when I changed it to pink, they're like, oh, girl. And, I, <laughs> and I remember like going down at one point in the fight and the kid was like, don't worry, Dizzy, I got you. And he's like <laughs> running over and reviving me. And I'm just like, this was so wholesome. This just restored my faith like <laughs> in, in, in the, the online gaming fandom. It was like the most pleasant experience I had playing yeah. with strangers i was like yeah very sweet yeah Yeah, anytime you want to jump on overwatch we we play every weekend i mean are you it depends are you console or or pc uh i am console are you pc pc i mean there there are other like i i um if i'm not playing overwatch with my friends i'm playing rocket league by myself because i love rocket league so. Oh, my brother-in-law loves Rocket mm-hmm. League. He's like obsessed. I didn't really get it. I play a little bit. I didn't get into it too much. Mm-hmm. But I think you can cross. You can cross play now. Yeah, you can cross cross play between uh, console and uh, and PC. So if you ever want to squat up on, on Rocket League, right. I'm pretty tags. I'm pretty good at it. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trick shotting all over the place. But I'll I'll oh, air, I'll hit an air every once in a while. I have my good days and I have really <laughs> bad days. So anyone you want, anytime you want to squat up, just let me know. But uh, let's <laughs> wow, we went on a huge, huge, huge gaming tangent there. But let's circle it back to Star Wars. This is a Star Wars <laughs> show. <laughs> so you're going to be dressing up uh, in celebration. Are you have multiple outfits picked out, or are you just going one day, or what are you? What are you thinking? I, I'm going all four days. And wow. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm I'm hoping to cosplay all four of those days. Mm-hmm. Now, whether that be different cosplays, the same one. It depends on how quick I can get my act together <laughs> um, because I have some stuff that is not ready. It's like TikTok ready from like here up yeah, and not like. I was about to say, there's a reason you only see my Han Solo from the waist up. I didn't have the bottom half of it. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. So and then I I did see a Jin Erso cosplay that I've had my eye on for a while. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, maybe I just order it because that's like a full cosplay if it fits I was like that's a full cosplay already done I don't really have to worry anything about it I wouldn't necessarily have to wear a wig and that's always a plus Mm -hmm. like if I don't have to wear a wig that's no helmets or masks or anything yeah yeah so in an ideal world if I could get everything done I'm hoping to do Hoth Leia I'm hoping to do Ahsoka in her cargo of doom jumpsuit um Maybe might bring out my OG Leia from uh, from A New Hope because I spelled out that one, and maybe my Jedi for like a comfy, just a comfy like mm-hmm. day at con because I feel yeah. like Jedi are very casual and all. But that's the thing. This is the thing about Star Wars Celebration, and this is also how I felt felt about when I uh, when when you go to a convention that's your is so focused on that thing that you like, you're interested in doing so many. Um, so many panels there's mm-hmm. so many things you want to see so i'm i'm worried about being in cosplay and wanting to run around so much that i'm like tired because i also want to i want to cosplay but i also want to enjoy everything that there is and being in full costume can take its toll on you so i don't want to put a damper on my day either mm-hmm. so yeah that's I guess yeah yeah <laughs> that, that that was me in orlando because like i said i had my mark one resistance pilot uh outfit for for uh, megacon and then i upgraded the entire thing i got a new belt i got new uh boots i got i upgraded my helmet which is sitting on the floor right now in pieces um i from head to toe i redid it all and then i i went to orlando i went to the convention one day not an outfit and then the second day i was like i'm gonna do it the second day and then i bailed on it because I was like, that first day was so exhausting. I was like, do I want to be in this outfit all day long and just sweating to the entire time? Because I was sweating all through Megacon. And I was like, yeah. I don't think I want to do it. So I, I just I, didn't, it never, the, the outfit never saw the light of day. So I was so disappointed in myself. When I did D23 a few mm-hmm. years back, um, it was it was like that year after like Carrie Fisher had passed away. Mm-hmm. So it was a three day, it was three days. And I did Princess Leia every, every day, like in in honor of her. Um, but I started with the mo- I started with the New Hope, and it progressively got more casual as it went. I did like classic Leia in her New Hope dress. I did uh, Leia wearing Han Solo's clothes, like as if she like raided his uh, his trunk. That's fun. And then I did like 
casual modern Leia. So each day just got more casual and more comfy. And I think that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking because it's like the Jedi tunic has so many layers, especially with the new robe coming in. It's going to be so hot. So I'm thinking maybe the second day and then the third day I might go as Han. And then I, we have to leave. We, we get there early Wednesday and then we have to leave Sunday morning. Just that we have, yeah. Yeah, we have to get back back here to be with the baby. Um, yeah, yeah. He's our important. Yeah. Oh, I don't. We can't call her baby now. She's doing, she's gonna be four in a couple of months. She's still the baby. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is like your favorite Star Wars like outfit to cosplay as? Probably Hoth Leia. Mm -hmm. It's it it's been my dream cosplay for a long time. That is my favorite look that she wears throughout the entire uh, series. I. I just, not, I just love it. I love the hair. I love the way it looks. It's fit. It just, it's so great. And I feel like we we see her in Empire Strikes Back, like taking on so much responsibility and like leading. And so I just, I, I love it. It's just iconic to me. So that was really one of the reasons why I really want to get that finished. So I know it's going to be hot. Um, yeah. yeah, with the vest um, and the jumpsuit. Yeah. California in May. Yeah, jumps, snow jumpsuit in, in, in May in California. It's going to be hot. At least it's but, not Florida. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, Leia, she wears so much white. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It's not good for conventions, but man, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you say if money and time wasn't like an, like, wasn't a problem and like mm -hmm. dream cosplay? Uh, you can stick to Star Wars. You can, you can not, but like, what would you say, like, you you're not doing it yourself you're hiring the best person to do it and like you have no yeah money is no option time is no option what would you say you would want to do snap i gotta yeah. think about that um money is not an option i probably have to go with one of padme's like like queen amidala mm -hmm. um uh, outfits god I so many of them though like I'm thinking of two specifically. I can't figure out what to call them, but like the iconic one that she wears at the very beginning that have lights on it. Oh, like, yeah, the that red. one's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And also the one, it's also red and, but her hair is like. Oh, when green. she's in the Senate, the. Yeah. Yes. The Senate one. Like, oh, it's so good. Like those outfits, so beautiful. I've seen cosplayers like, um, Talk about how they built it, and how the, all the sewing, everything that goes into it, all the fabric. I'm just like, that's got to be so expensive and so time consuming. And like, I bow down to the people who do it. Mm. But yeah, probably, probably that. <laughs> <laughs> so out of all of your outfits, like, what would you say? Minus the so because obviously with the face paint and everything, what would you oh, say yeah. was the one that takes the longest to just get on? Not, not including all the ones that you don't, that aren't Star Wars. So Riku from Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. there is a redesign that this artist, Hannah Alexander did. She's an amazing artist um, and she does like a lot of character like redesigns in her own style. So she did a character redesign of Riku um, and it's beautiful. It, it, these sleeves that have like all these like petals on it. Um, and it, it looks very simple because the top is pretty much like a bathing suit top and it's shorts, but then you have like these sleeves and, um, gloves and I have like a half legging that mm -hmm. goes up here and there's a hood, oh, wow. headbands, like there's things dangling from it. <laughs> it's, it's very pretty. And then the feet, um, the shoes that I have, um, have like, um, this craft foam that goes over and, and like getting that in place. So yeah, probably that one. I'll have to like take wow. a photo or something because it's very beautiful. And it's funny, we wore that to Megacon one year and a lot of people, um, my I did Riku, my friend did, did Yuna. And a lot of people either kind of recognized the characters or didn't know the characters at all. And they're like, I don't know what this is, but y'all <laughs> look beautiful. And we were like, thank you. <laughs> and people were like, it looks like Yuna and Riku, but slightly different. And we were like, yes, exactly. You got it. And we would tell them it was from, it was mm -hmm. an artist redesigned. And they'd be like, ah, oh, you see the gears turning. Um, so yeah, like mm -hmm. I love seeing like artist interpretations of different characters. It's really, it's really fun to kind of, kind of go uh, take a different ap approach yeah. to a cosplay like that. So how long is it? How long is the Ahsoka? Uh, face paint take honest like if you from start to finish because uh, like every time you show up on uh, like you, on you do a ticket video it's like god 
she must have like painted one night and then did as many videos as she could because it takes so long. Literally what I do, I'm like, if I'm in this makeup, I'm going to make as many as possible. I remember someone was like, did you really get in this makeup for like a two second bit? Because it was like a so it was just in it for two seconds. And I was like, well, yes, but no, like it was a two second mm -hmm. bit that I made more videos while I was in it. Um, you know, I've never actually timed myself. If I had to guess, maybe like two, three, two, two and a half hours wow. to... Because also there's a, I'm not the best when it comes to makeup. So there's a lot of trial and error. So I'll start doing something. I'm like, oh, that looks awful. I got to start that again. Or, um, or some, or one time I started doing it and I tried a slightly darker orange and I was just like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go lighter this time. And I feel like I'm learning something new every time I do it. <laughs> so it does get quicker as, as you go. You get a little bit more confident. Mm. You find you find um shortcuts and different techniques i found i uh, there's somebody who makes like ahsoka like stencils for her white marks oh, wow not as like time saver like just tape it paint, oh that's paint, cool paint. so that's really nice mm -hmm. i'd like to get an airbrush that's not like an air like an airbrush painter at some point make me that be a little bit quicker mm -hmm. <laughs> well it, it looks good in all the videos so <laughs> you're doing you're doing something right thank you <laughs> <laughs> so Back to celebration because we got we went all over the place. We we're here oh, yeah. we we're talking about celebration. We got back to celebration. So, what kind of panels are you looking forward to seeing? Because, like, I, like we said, we haven't gotten any big news on what's going to be out there. Like, are there any smaller panels that you want to get on? Because that those are the ones that I usually seek out. I've usually gotten into like the author panels, um, just Ooh, random yeah. ones like that. Like, those are the ones I really enjoy because I went to one one year. I think it was Chicago. Timothy Zahn was doing like a workshop type of thing. And he would take, oh. he would take like, you know, like a inspiration from the crowd. It's like, all right, we're going to, we're going to do a story. Um, what's our character's name? Where do they live? Where did they grow up? And it was such an eye opening experience. So I love like going to small ones like that. Like is there anything like that you want to look forward to? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I would love to go to some of the author panels. Um, I'm a writer myself. Um, hmm. I'm in, I'm going to school right now for creative writing. I'm getting my master's. Oh, wow. And so I'm so my thesis for school is it is a full novel or um, and so I'm writing young adult sci fi. And, and so I'd be lying if I said Star Wars wasn't a big inspiration, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So these these people, these authors who write Star Wars, I'm like, man, you're doing what what I'd love to be doing like that. That's so amazing. So I'd love to I've I've been trying to, to read more Star Wars books recently um, and I'd, so I'd love to go to a panel like that and really just hear them talk about their craft and uh, what it's like. Um, also, I really love voice actors. So I'd love to, if they're having any like voice actor mm -hmm. panels, I'm there. I always feel like voice actor panels, even if you're not a fan of whatever show it is, they're always like so chaotic and yeah. so much fun. So I'm always down for a good voice actor panel. Yeah. That's all. What was the last Star Wars book you read? Um, last one I read... Um, bloodline um it's my favorite i had I, like i'm looking i'm looking yeah. over here at my uh book shelves i think this last one i read yeah no, bloodline. I, yeah, I that love, was uh, really good so i was of yeah. course i had to read the leo ones mm -hmm. first so i read leo princess of all drawn and then I, I went to bloodline yeah. and it, man, did you read bloodline oh yeah i bloodline's my favorite canon novel it's oh it's my right God. it's so good i mean i mean in tears at the end it was so unexpected mm -hmm. i was like i'm really crying right now yeah over this like this character who I just met, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not to give any spoilers away, but I was like, I'm like, I didn't know it was going to catch me in the feels mm -hmm. like it did. It you, was you'll probably be that so way good. if you get into the High Republic. Have you read the High Republic ones yet? The first they're one? Not, they're, in the, they're on the shelf right now, actually. So <laughs> they're, they're just waiting for me to crack them open. The first one, I'm only, I've gotten through the first two. I, I listen to them on audio form because I'm a legendary slow reader. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm ju I just started the third one. The first one, it's like... It's such a gut punch. The first chapter is a gut punch. So it's like, oh, oh no. Now I know so. what I got to read next. <laughs> I, I started doing the audio books because it's sometimes so hard to find time to mm -hmm. sit down and, and read. So the audio books were so great when I was like heading to work or on my yeah. lunch break. could listen to it while I eat. And, but recently I lost my headphones. So oh, no. I haven't been able to listen to my books. And now I'm falling behind. Yeah. Because um, I try to keep up with the... 
I set a reading challenge for myself on Goodreads, and now um, I'm falling behind on my reading mm-hmm. challenge because I haven't been able to finish my darn audiobooks. Yeah, but my favorite author, or not author, narrator is uh, Mark Thompson. Anything with Mark Thompson, I'm like, yep, I'm listening to it because his his yeah. voices are so amazing. Um, I do have a little uh, like a, a hint on because you know I've been listening to audiobooks uh, for years now, and my yeah. my trick is to get through them quicker. I listen to them at 1.53 speed, or not three or three five speed. It's like yeah. anything faster than that. It gets a little like, uh, so, but like, that's, yeah. that's the perfect speed. But then when you go to a new book, it, it resets and they're like, why? What? They're so slow. Oh, that's why. Just, yeah, yeah. I totally have done that too. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, if I just didn't like, you know, turn mm-hmm. it up and not, I think I'd finish this at uh, 45 minutes versus, you know, an yeah. hour and 10 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, I, have, I haven't been able to, to listen to them as often though. Do you, are you looking forward to any kind of like, cause every year for celebration uh, that we've had them, we've gotten like one at least one really giant bomb of a news like a news bomb are you like do you have any predictions or any anything you're looking forward to hearing on that i don't even know yeah. I no <laughs> predictions i i'm really yeah. excited to hear more about potential like star wars games like mm-hmm. video games yeah. um very excited oh and i've never played speaking of video games i've never played Knights of the Old Republic. So I'm very mm-hmm. hyped for this. Uh, yeah, the revamp. Yeah. The revamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, finally, I get to play this. Like, I've heard so many people talking about it oh, for years and I've never played it. So. It's amazing. Um, I, yeah. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't have, I didn't really think, I haven't really thought about like predictions yeah, it's, or anything like it's that. It's so crazy because the, the, you know, the biggest thing dropping obviously before um, is Obi Wan. I'm so excited yeah. for Obi Wan. Oh, it, yeah. And like it's, I'm yeah, I'm getting spoiled this year because when they delayed celebration back two years, and they announced, all right, celebration will be May 26th. I'm like, oh, that's my my birthday's on the, on the 25th. Awesome, cool. And then like Obi Wan drops on the 25th. I'm like, oh, what a great birthday present. <laughs> so, yeah. so the whole week is just gonna be awesome. Like keep it coming. Let's yeah. go. What's next? <laughs> so I'm ho- I'm hoping yeah, we get I'm something sure. big. Um, maybe like because I've been hearing um there might be dropping a new animated series and people are like, Oh, Luke Skywalker series or something like that. I'm like, that'd be cool. But, uh, yeah. Um, have you, yeah. I would love to see something about like, yeah, maybe about Luke or maybe about the new Republic. Cause mm-hmm. that's where I feel like there's like a gap in the story that I really want yes. to know. I, I want to see the rise of the new Republic. I want to mm-hmm. see, I want to see Leia forming government. Like I'm yeah. not sure. I know people don't think like, not maybe not a lot of people think the politics are that exciting, but I'm like, I want to see it. I want to see it. Then yeah, I gotta know. <laughs> I I have to know because obviously you're a huge Ahsoka fan. Like mm-hmm. watching the last uh, couple episodes of Book of Boba Fett, were you like me when Ahsoka and Luke are on screen, and I'm just bawling my eyes out, just like it's I yeah. Like seeing them together, I'm like, man, I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna get this. Yes. And like to see it, it's just it's so validating. I'm just like. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's because you know what a big part of Anakin's life she was and Padme's life, and and it's so sad what you know when you finish the series to think like oh my gosh like they'll never know Ahsoka or just like thinking like it's never gonna happen and then to see like to actually see them together it really just hits home and it's like I'm sure she probably sees like so much of Anakin and so much of Padme in him. And I just, I feel like that. Oh, yeah. just, so much just like your father. Oh, that line just killed me. Uh, and now that we got Luke and Ahsoka together, if I don't see Leia and Ahsoka together, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like just petition everybody like to storm Luke. So I'm like, what are you doing? We need, we need Leia and Ahsoka together. Leia. Yeah. I'm just like, she's gotta be in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Also, the fact that they never even mentioned her in uh, Boba Fett. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are we going to talk about Hut Slayer? Let's go. Let's well, go. I'm sure we'll see her in Ahsoka. I'm hoping. I'm crossing my fingers that we'll get Leia and Ahsoka on screen together in the Ahsoka series. But Okay. It, we'll see young Leia in um, Obi-Wan, Hopefully. too. I mean, seeing young Luke, it'd be really nice to see like, yeah. young Leia I'm at s- some point. I'm so incredibly excited for Obi- Obi-Wan's my favorite character. So yeah, yeah, I, he's amazing. Yeah, I love I, I cannot wait to see it. Oh wow, we've run way over the time I told you we we're gonna. That I said, oh, it'll be like forty-five minutes of your time, and it's like, oh, wow. So yeah, um, Sorry, it, was, it was time well spent. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who aren't familiar with your your social media presence, where can they find you online? Yeah, 
yeah, you can all find me on TikTok and Instagram. I'm Alderon Places underscore. Um, yeah, so if you like Star Wars and you like cosplay and silly videos, uh, that's where you can find me. <laughs> yeah. Go check her out. She's got some amazing stuff. Like I said, it influenced a lot of what I do on my page. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Drew Dimalanta, D-I-M-A-L-N-T-A, and on TikTok at Rogue Leader Drew. If you're listening to this on audio form, please follow the feed and rate us. And if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell icon in the lower right-hand corner to see when we do things on this channel, which is, all, of course, every Monday beyond the Schmodown. And sometimes on Friday, we do Redcasts. We'll, we'll get to that. But thank you again, Maria, for, for joining me. This was a lot of fun, obviously. We, we spent a lot of time talking about so many random things, but... Anytime you want to want to come on uh, on the show, I, I would glad, lovely to have you back on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on this episode of Going Rogue. May the force be with you, always. Always.